Good afternoon. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, October 25th, 2018. I hope your day is going well. Mine is doing that. Uh, spent some time going over some of the video from Hurricane Michael, and I'm going to tell you, I got some good stuff that I'm going to be putting into the documentary in a very analytical way. I think you're going to really appreciate it. It's going to take a few months to get it done, as you can imagine. There's a lot to go through. I also have Hurricane Florence, of course. Not going to forget that. That went right over my house, basically. But uh, things are progressing. you got to start somewhere. And i got a lot of video, the most that I've ever had in my career, to pour over and extract things from, figure out how to frame it up. So that's what I've been doing. I do that at night and sleep a little, get up during the day, work a little, sleep a little. Hey, when you're an entrepreneur and a creator, that's the life. And I wouldn't trade it for anything especially when we have something so amazing to share that can help people understand things, maybe motivate them to evacuate and really understand the science behind what happened with this year's hurricanes. So progress is being made. That being said, let's take a look at what's happening in the tropics. Progress being made there too in the way of finally shutting things down in terms of any threats to land. As you can see, we don't have anything over here in the western part of the basin. Only 95L way out here in the open Atlantic, uh, probably going to develop into the next tropical storm, which would be called Oscar, and it may bring some swells to Bermuda, which is here, parts of the northern leewards in Puerto Rico as it moves up and then over this way and then finally out to sea, depending on how strong it gets. Any wind-generating storm system can produce those swells that radiate out from it, and as it moves by, it, those could come from the north to the south and here from the southeast to the northwest towards Bermuda and the Lesser Antilles, etc. But that's about it. It'll be interesting to see, though, as we get into November and beyond, do we get the development up here in the subtropics where water temperatures, especially over in this area, are quite a bit warmer than normal, you know, average, whatever you want to call it. And in the off-season, we typically see some of those systems try to develop, especially as cold air, very cold air, and the upper levels of the atmosphere moves out over this region, that gives you the temperature contrast enough, the instability, to create tropical storms over water temperatures that are normally uh, cooler than what we see in the real part of the hurricane season. So when something pops up, I'll, I'll talk about it then, but we're almost to that time of year where we can start seeing development even in December, January, you know, I guess as the climate warms, we could see more and more of these off-season storms in the far reaches of the Atlantic, uh, somewhere near the Azores, sometimes up here. You just never know. Just something I'd throw out there. Looking at the satellite imagery today from uh, tropicaltidbits.com, there is a missing frame. You'll see it blink right there. Uh, it's just uh, missing data. But you see a uh, storm system here wound up over the nation's midsection. Some of the energy left over from Willa, <clears throat> Hurricane Willa that came in through here, and this will eventually spawn another surface low, and that'll come up through the mid-Atlantic, giving you folks, me included down here in the Carolinas, a rainy few days, windy, breezy, kind of murky, I guess, chilly. So sit back, watch TV, catch up on Netflix, binge and go see a movie, or sit at home and hang out with the family, whatever. Uh, it's going to be that kind of a weekend, I think where the weather is just going to be kind of miserable for this area. And, you know, some areas need the rain. You wouldn't think that would be the case after something like Florence. And it's important, too, as I do this, you know, down here in the panhandle where Michael and then up and through Georgia, too, still reeling big time from Hurricane Michael. So as this front pushes through rain, gusty winds, etc., you know, you need the fresh water. It helps to clean the system out so to speak fresh water rainfall is good for the planet but you know people are down there who have no place to live they have leaky houses businesses etc um, it's just one of those double-edged swords you need the fresh water you need the rainfall the cleansing properties of it but a lot of suffering going on down there still uh, there is 95 L trying to wind up no worries at all this will not make it to the United States and yes I can say that a hundred percent you know how I'm kind of leery to ever say something 100%, but in this case, it's 100% in my opinion that this is not going to make it back to the U.S. It'll curve up and go on out 
and be absorbed into a frontal system. Hurricane Center also in the eastern Pacific, for what it's worth, has outlined of this area. I'll show you. Just prove it to you real quick. Click on East Pacific. That was close with where the circle was. Let's get rid of it. 20% chance of development over the next few days. Don't worry about it. It's just a little trough of low pressure that is stretched out uh, across this region, a focusing mechanism for showers and thunderstorms. But as you can see, even though there is this sort of grapevine, there's not many grapes on it. No ripe grapes. They're all sour and falling off and whatever. So don't worry about that too much. Looking at the GFS here, this is the 12Z from today. You know what, let's just start this at the beginning and move it forward. You see a couple of things. Here comes the energy with the upper level system, the surface low, and that combines to produce all that rain and sort of misery, nasty weather up the east coast and mid-Atlantic. Then 95L develops briefly probably into tropical storm Oscar, and then it gets whisked away because it's a progressive pattern. These fronts are going to come through and these troughs are going to dig in and I really just don't see much in the way of any chance of development. You can't say yet with 100% certainty that we won't see something try to develop in this area before the month of November is over. It's not impossible. It's, it's uh, pretty rare, exceedingly rare, but not impossible. But for now, as this system moves through, I'm going to stop it right here. You know, for a little bit of time there, this is about three to four days out, it tries to organize, but it's not that impressive in the model field and it'll go on by Bermuda and be absorbed into the front and not be a big problem. So that's great. I thought this was interesting. You know how often I like to look at what Ben Knoll is up to as well as others that we will cite from time to time as I browse the Twitter world of weather and hurricanes. Um, week one, troughiness in the east. Let's try to let's see if I can freeze this. There we go. Troughiness in the east and that's the blue abnormally low heights overall in the atmosphere so low pressure in the mid and upper levels here so you get this troughiness with a ridge out west you know very oversimplification of the situation then in week two it gets replaced troughiness generally speaking uh, out west and you can see a little bit of the dip in the heights there I'm exaggerating it here you can see the height lines are not quite that dramatic but then you have ridging anomalous ridging over the east so what does that mean? Well, despite the El Nino trying to come on, et cetera, and we'll figure out what that's going to mean at a later time, uh, as Ben notes, uh, you know, you're going to have a surge in temperatures for the start of November in the east, and I guess that's good. I like warm air. I also like cold and stormy. That can be interesting sometimes. And then also on the back side of that, you see that what he was referring to, the Gulf moisture tap, could definitely be in play. So any kind of a frontal boundary through this area could mean for some stormy conditions in the nation's midsection. Just something to can, uh, keep in mind. Remember, I do cover off-season stuff, not just hurricanes. Hurricanes might be my forte, but uh, other weather as well. And you can be a part of that uh, as a sustaining member at Patreon, a just an incredible platform, patreon.com slash hurricane track. I'm on there. Levi Cowan is on there, the folks from weathernerds.org, they're on there as well, and it's a really neat way to say, you know what, what you do helps me, I understand it, I like it, and I can support it with $1 to $100 a month, and anything in between, a fantastic group of people that are supporting this effort through Patreon, and of course, on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. All right, that is it for now. Not much to worry about, which is great after what we've been through this year. Um, and, you know, they're also picking up the pieces out there in the Northern Marianas. There was not much mention at all on, as they say, mainstream media of Typhoon, Super Typhoon U2. I, I think that's how you say it, Y-U-T-U, as it went over the Northern Marianas yesterday. Uh, incredible damage video coming out of there. And, you know, that's part of the U.S. Uh, interest, okay? It's... You know, not like it's nowhere. It is somewhere, and there's 50-something thousand people that live out there. And um, they got wrecked by a Category 5 equivalent, Saffir Simpson scale, uh, typhoon yesterday. So it's been a busy year, a rough year for U.S. interests all around. And if you go back to last year with Irma and Maria and uh, Harvey, you know, we're on kind of a negative roll here. We need a break. So at least we're getting that for now. 
Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for your time and attention. We'll talk some more tomorrow afternoon.